Okay, we're going to start our discussion on the ACR tools. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is the magnifying glass, which happens to be the one we have on right now. If you simply click on it, it'll bring up the uh, magnifying glass, which they call the zoom tool. Notice the little Z at the end of zoom tool. That is an indication of its keyboard shortcut. So let's just choose the hand tool for a moment. If we're in a tool and we want to change tools, we can simply type on the keyboard the letter for the shortcut, Z for Zoom Tool, and there you go. All right, this tool works by clicks. If you click on the large view of the image, it will incrementally adjust in. You'll notice down here it has options. You can uh, make the image smaller or larger by clicking on these. By clicking on them, you're only going to make them larger with your standard settings and then you can back out like this. There's a little drop down arrow right here and I find this useful for you'll see later on with some of our tools we'll want to zoom out to three or four hundred percent and then you're going to want to get back to uh, fit in view so you can see the entire image again and this just makes it simple. So that's the quick look at the magnifying glass tool, the zoom tool. As we move through this discussion and talk about various keyboard shortcuts, these shortcuts we're talking about apply both here in Adobe Camera Raw as well as in Photoshop. So there's one set of keyboard shortcuts that uh, work through both programs. The next tool we're going to talk about is the hand tool and we'll click on it. We could use the keyboard shortcut H, we'll click on it and what do we do with the hand tool? Well, we're not doing much right now with the hand tool. But if we press Z for our zoom tool, drive into the image somewhere, and then get our hand tool, we'll press the H key to bring back the hand tool, I can now click and hold and then move the image around so I can look at various sections of it. Now, I rarely ever click on the hand tool or click H and we'll take you back to the zoom tool for a minute. There's a another way to bring the hand tool up that is even more convenient and if you hold the space bar down it brings the hand tool up while you hold the space bar down. So now you can click and drag. This is probably the most convenient way to call up the hand tool because when you let go then you're back into the tool you were using Alright, so that's how that works. Let's right click on the image. This is another way you can use your zoom tool. Right click on the image and then fit back into view. A little simpler than coming down here. Okay, the next tool, or pardon me, the next uh, image we're going to work on is this one here and we're going to use the next tool on it. And that will be the white balance tool. And you can adjust white balance using this tool or you can simply grab your sliders over here and adjust white balance to taste. It's, it's, uh, if you're doing it over here it means you have a pretty idea, pretty good idea what, what you want to do or perhaps you don't have any idea and you just want to do some wild swings to see what you like. This tool is really convenient I think for those who are beginning with this uh, in that you click on something that is a neutral tone in the image and it then sets the white balance. Notice these settings are changing over here as I click around. The idea though is to pick a neutral tone. If you pick a tone that has a color uh, to it that is not a neutral tone, for example this tip of clouds right here is going to be pretty yellow and maybe even it was a late towards sunset there might even be some warm, warm colors in it. So if we click it it throws our white balance way off. If we pick something that's much closer, the top of these caps are more or less white, to a neutral tone, then we get a more realistic look at uh, accurate white balance. If we zoom in, Z for the zoom tool, click in on these orange chairs, and click on the orange chair, then we throw the white balance way off. Again, this will work for you if you have this uh, particular eyedropper tool for, for white balance. will work for you if you have something that is more or less very close to a 
neutral tone in your image. And these clouds are close to being gray. Yeah, it looks looks reasonably well. We've removed the blue blue cast from when it came in. Let's just check that by our preview. Came in this way. Maybe you like it this way. This is a uh, very subjective. Yeah, or maybe you like it that way. It's your call. If uh, for some reason you drive your white balance somewhere and you're, you forget where you started with and you decide, you know, I really prefer it the way it was originally, so let's just drive it crazy. Oh my gosh, I don't know where I what where did I start? What were my settings to start with? Well, you can come over to this little drop down arrow right over here, uh, click on it, and you can return this uh, to as shot. All right, you also have other preset kind of defaults, which you may find useful as you're starting. I think I rarely use these now, but when you're starting out, it may you may find them very useful. Uh, well, and of course, if you're shooting inside and you want to make a quick adjustment, and these might be handy to use. If I'm shooting inside, I usually have my white balance set to auto. Okay, let's go back to a shot. So it's easy to restore using this little drop-down box right here.